Hello, love bugs, and welcome back to part three of answering your questions about the wondrous world of entomology and how to become an entomologist. We've already covered like how to get started, just some basic questions, and then specifically tips and tricks for grad school. And now today we are on the career side of entomology. While watching, be sure to watch all the way to the end. Again, I combined your questions with not only my advice, but advice from other experts as well to give you a well-rounded bit of advice. Today's video is sponsored by me and the workshop Chemtails, which is a workshop all about transforming insect chemical ecology into a playable card game that we mail to your house. Audrey, my editor, made an amazing trailer that she is going to dump in right here and so you can watch for your viewing pleasure. It's super short, like a minute, and then we will continue with the video. Sign up is in the reference section below. Thanks, team. mission is all about chemical defenses, offenses, warfare, and evolution. We are going to be turning insect and arthropod biology into a playable card game that we are going to mail to your house. How exciting is that? Without further ado, let us get into the questions. We have a bunch of questions kind of along the same vein. Both Celeste and Renato Guzman basically asked the same question, but Celeste specifically says, my daughter is interested in all things bee. I realize that's hyped right now, but how does one make a living with the study of insects? What are the career options that actually pay? Thank you. And Renato Guzman says, what jobs can you get with an entomologist degree? Wyatt specifically has advice for this saying, don't worry if you don't have a plan. I thought I would be a forensic entomologist. Now I'm board certified and work in pest control. Plans are overrated. So if you watched my video last week about graduate school, then you will know that there are lots of different ways to become an entomologist and therefore you have lots of different ways in which to follow a career path. The most traditional career path that I outlined in the first video is just becoming a professor and going into academia. You can go into a research one university doing laboratory work and that is actually pretty lucrative if you get to the top. I mean, I guess if anything is pretty lucrative if you get to the top. It is a lot of work though. I will not lie. It's a lot of work and a lot of time but it pays off at the end, especially if you really like research and you like the research that you're doing and you like managing a lab and all that kind of stuff. So you can definitely just take the traditional path of becoming a professor, although what kind of professor and what you're teaching and what you're researching will obviously be different based on the type of entomology that you go into. You can also be a veterinary entomologist and you can work with animals and animal spaces. There's lots of room for veterinary entomologists in chickens, for example, that tend to get all sorts of lice. You can be a medical entomologist, dedicating your life to studying diseases and disease vectors and helping not only control the habitat, but also controlling the vectors themselves and also understanding the vector biology and the parasite bio biology. And you may be like on the route of a doctor. You can be working in the Navy or in the military, accompanying troops out and making sure that their area is safe and are not likely to have problems with these disease carrying insects. You can become a forensic entomologist, both solving crimes like when did this kid die and how did he die, but also kind of like more mundane things of like 
there's termites in someone's apartment and who pays for that? How long have the termites been there? Does the landlord pay for it? Does the tenants pay for it? And kind of solving those, some of those like urban entomology problems. You can be an outreach person. You can be a videographer. You can be a tour guide, that's what I do. You can be a teacher. There's no shortage of people in the pest control industry. And one of my friends, Heather, she actually started her own pest control business focused on understanding the biology of the insects that are plaguing people. So she can recommend strategies following integrated pest management or IPM, which uses chemicals as a tool to help control the pest, but is not the only method and really works with families and with people to make their home less desirable to pests by just lifestyle changes. If your daughter or if you are encouraged enough and love insects enough and like love what you're doing enough, you will make it work. You can also go into the food industry. Entomophagy, or the eating of insects, is now gaining in popularity. So you can get into making food that has insects in it or insects comprise the main portion of the foods. You can also get into agriculture and farming, ecosystem health. There's lots of options to become an entomologist. Erica asking, I can't go back to school. It's too expensive, too time consuming, etc. So what are some other options? I can do lots of stuff with computers. I can write code, make games make 3D models, make animations, and I'd love to do something with bugs. Also, I'd like to get paid so I can eat. I'd also like to get paid so I can eat. Cough, cough, tourism, cough, cough, slash entomology workshops, cough, cough. And then Herpy also asks, can someone become an entomologist without a master's or a PhD? And we have some good advice from Dave. And Dave says, it's never too early or too late to become an entomologist. You don't need a fancy degree or a job to be an entomologist. In a way, entomology is a mindset. It's a love and curiosity of the small things. I'm a real world Ash Ketchum. Oh, the places we go and the bugs we catch. And I'm totally right there with Dave. I actually got into ecology because of Pokemon. I was like 10 playing red and Professor Oak was like, I study the Pokemon. And I was like, I wish Pokemon existed. So that way I could grow up and I could study the Pokemon too. And then I realized that and what he does is called ecology and you can do that on real animals. So thinking about the things that you're interested in and thinking about the things that you're good at. So Erica, you already mentioned that you're good at programming and making games and that kind of thing and that you would just like to include insects. Exactly how do you want to do that? Maybe you can make a game and sell it to schools. Maybe you can help entomologists program their statistics or entomologists program certain models or help design websites or a bunch of different things could go along with that. You would just have to be creative. Like you are limited by your own creativity and you would definitely have to go into some sort of marketing. Like you'd be a freelancer, so you would have to learn how to do marketing. You'd have to learn how to sell yourself. You'd have to see what the market needs or is interested in, or if you can make something that solves a problem that they have. For example, my friend Alex Wild is an amazing insect photographer and he does photos and he has been contracted to take photos for people's papers. So that way they can show their organism or they can show what they're talking about in the paper. Think about the skills that you have, but then think about how you can apply those and include insects. And on that note, I definitely agree with Dave that you don't have to have a fancy degree to become an entomologist. I really just think that being an entomologist means that you have a love for insects. And there are some people that don't have degrees formally in entomology, but are the best person and know the most about a specific group of insects or a certain behavior or something along those lines. Where I do have a degree, I have a degree in entomology, it's a master's degree from the University of Georgia. I am more interested in communication and ecology in general. So if I'm looking for an identification, like I might go to one of my friends who I know has just a love of a specific group and be like, hey, what is this? And I would definitely consider them an expert in that group, even though they don't have an official degree. They just had so much of a love for doing it. You can definitely be an entomologist and you can definitely get into like, entomology events 
or outreach events or anything kind of along that vein with just a love of entomology in general. And you can consider yourself, and I would definitely consider anyone who loves insects and studies them, whether it's through research or through literature and observation, to be an entomologist. So this next question comes from Alex and he asks, how likely is it to get your research published if you are not linked to an academic institution? To that I answer, I am not linked to an academic institution anymore. I was linked to the University of Georgia and I published zero papers attached to the University of Georgia. I would definitely have science allies. I have published in the fact that I am, am an author on two different research papers and both of those happened when I was no longer affiliated with the university. The first one was with my friend Morgan Jackson. I just happened to be at the beach in New Jersey, saw some weird flies, took the picture and sent them to him. And he was like, oh my God, this is an invasive species only recorded on the west coast of the United States send me those samples. So like I went back and he collected them and sent them to him. And that got my name on the paper. And then the second paper just recently came out uh, this year, and it's also linked in the reference section, that is about an endemic butterfly that lives in Quito and lives in the green spaces and lays its eggs on trees that are surrounded by highways, which is super interesting. I took some of the pictures, but I also helped edit the English and I also helped cut down tree bits and mail them to the professor. That also got my name on the paper. However, both of those two people are associated with their own universities. You want science allies, I would say. You would want a professor or students that have a connection to a university or a research institution, whether it's medicine or industry, like pest industry or agriculture industry. You'll definitely want a friend or an ally in those because that will definitely help you publish your own papers. Can you publish your own papers and not be associated? Yes but it's definitely not easy. I would definitely recommend having a science ally. We have questions about travel and being out in the field specifically. So Kylie asks, is entomology a good field if you want to get into travel? And Renato Guzman asks, what is a good job to have if you like being out in the field collecting and photographing insects and animals? There are two entomologists, Phil Torres and Aaron Pomerantz, that really take that photo aspect and travel aspect of entomology and make the most of it. It's definitely a little bit harder to go this route for travel, but think about what kind of travel you want to do and what kind of job you want to do, and you may be able to make it work. I have friends who work on natural history of specific groups, like I, my friend Andrea works on the natural history of spiders, and she comes down every summer in Ecuador to study the Ecuadorian spiders. I have friends who do field work that are doing taxonomy work, or they're doing just regular ecology work. Some urban entomologists or some agriculture entomologists will go and try and implement their research in other countries to help stabilize their food supply without relying so much on pesticides. So there are ways to do it, but you will have to be creative to think about exactly what kind of entomology you like to get into and then also implementing that. You are going to have to learn a lot of skills outside of entomology to make those things work. I am an entomologist. I have decided to travel to Ecuador and also live here so as you can see you can make it work and it will definitely be challenging it's always hard to go against the status quo but there are people who do it and people who do it successfully so ask them like what they did and what is some advice that they would give you so that way if you do choose to go kind of one of these non-traditional paths you're not walking the path alone archie asks what does your day-to-day -day life look like as i mentioned in the first video i have a very non-traditional job as an entomologist i am actually a tour guide when there isn't quarantine and my tours are personalized tours focused on ecology, entomology, conservation, and local culture. So that whole bundle has its own things that I do. And then also because it's quarantine, I've been focusing more on YouTube and entomology workshop, which is its own little ball of mess. So we're gonna talk about how my days are completely random and some things that I might be doing on them are different on different days. We're going to go pre-quarantine time. Pre-quarantine, what I would do is focus on my tourism business. 
So I was always trying to attract clients in various ways. I would reach out to specific people who I thought would bring groups down. When I'm not trying to get clients, I am doing a lot of work on organizing their trip. So I write initial travel summaries that I think fits what they want out of a tour and what they want out of Ecuador and how long they can be there and ecosystems that they want to see. So I try and take all that information and then build some packages that I think they'd like. And then they pick one and then I finalize itineraries. Once the itinerary is agreed upon and finalized, then I'm on the phone and texting a lot, getting all of those reservations in, in place. So taxis, hotels, restaurants, eco lodges, tour, tour guides, food, like all of the things. And then when I'm actually on tour, I'm with that person 24 seven. We go to the different places. I do all the translating. I get them from point A to point B. I make sure that they go to sleep in their correct hotel that we wake up, we do all the activities and then I deliver them back to their hotel for the night, et cetera, et cetera. So that's like kind of like the tourism aspect of my business. And then the other side of my business is YouTube. Now I've decided to work on YouTube. Hi everybody. Thanks for watching. Also these entomology workshops building that course or just building YouTube videos, doing a lot of research, doing a lot of script building. And I feel like, especially because that mine is like so research based and I really like kind of getting into the nitty gritty, like I'm there with like chemical names and scientific names and understanding like random bits of ecology. And one of the videos that I have planned for you guys, I actually had to read and translate a book from Spanish into English because it was done on Ecuadorian beetles. A lot of just like sitting in front of books or in front of the computer <laughs> is what my day to day life actually revolves around. And then from there, there's a lot of camera work. So there's the recording these videos for both the workshop and for YouTube. And then there's a lot of editing. Like each video that I do takes about 10 hours to edit. Actually, I mean, it's pretty insane. When I'm not doing all of those things, I am working on my social media, planning on like growth strategies, uh, organizing content that I want to do. I'm never bored. That's for sure. I definitely always feel like I should be working. So that's one of the downsides of running your own business is that, you know, there's always things to be doing and things to be learning and things to be editing and perfecting. So that's why entomology I think is so interesting is because we all lead completely different lives. Kylie asks, if you didn't have your own business, what job would you have in entomology? And I'd probably just be doing the same thing, to be honest. I kind of ended up forging my own path because I didn't really like the paths that were available, despite the fact that there are lots of them. I just did like none of them were exactly for me. I would probably be doing something in outreach, either with my own business or maybe working for someone else, doing outreach events with bringing insects, both live and collections to schools and adult education programs and things like that. I may also be a professor at a community college. I really do miss this aspect with students and designing coursework and designing assessments and, and just that personal connection that you get with students over a long period of time in a semester. Being a professor was actually plan A and then I realized that like academia wasn't for me and I didn't want to continue getting a PhD and then I thought that I couldn't get a PhD because of imposter syndrome that we talked in video one and then I ran away to the rainforest and I found that the rainforest was the right answer so here we are. I hope that you like this video. If you did like it be sure to like it and also subscribe. I love answering your questions. If you like this video series let me know so I do more of them. As you can tell I'm kind of experimenting with my content. I want to find something that I like doing for you guys and that you guys like listening to and watching. I will see you next week with another video. Bye!